So right now, we're gonna start uh, making some cuts for our face frame. So for our face frame, we're gonna use, let me see if I can, the shop is getting smaller as we speak. So here's the material for this. Now, this is a one by four. If you don't know now, uh, if you're entering into the woodworking world, <laughs> good luck, because a one by four is not a one by four. It's actually three quarters of an inch thick by three and a half inches. So one by five is one inch or three quarters of an inch by four and a half inches. Everything is a half inch less. So literally, uh, if you're familiar with the Craig products, face frame is what they do best. So all we're gonna do is cover these unsightly plywood edges, just like that. We're gonna cover this gap here. We're gonna cover it just like that. Now, the one thing to take into consideration is the bed. If I take, or I should say the mattress, not the bed, this is the bed. If I take this and put it flush with the top and I put a mattress on that, it's gonna fly all over the place. My kids sleep and have nightmares and dreams and all sorts of stuff. So what we wanna do is bring it up a little bit. So my recommendation is check the thickness of your mattress. You still wanna be able to get around and tuck it and make the bed. Um, but what you wanna do is bring it up so the mattress doesn't slide over. I brought mine up eh, like three inches. So my styles right here uh, are 13 inches. So cut your one by four to exactly the dimension of your box, which for me is 74 and a half and then cut your styles. If you cut these exactly at 18 inches, cut them at 13 inches, and then put them all together. So it's time to head on back to the miter saw and make two cuts at 74 and a half inches, which is the length of our box. Okay, so now you cut your two pieces. This is gonna be your top rail and your bottom rail. Normally, our styles would run all the way to the top, but because of all of our cuts, it makes it more efficient for us to cut one long rail, one long rail across the bottom, and then four styles. So when you do that, you wanna make sure that they're cut exactly the same. If you, can, if you have a miter saw with a setup like I have, you can set yourself a stop. If you don't, come back and forth and just make sure that they're completely flush on either end. Because if they're not, when you install it and you put the thing together, your face frame together, it's gonna to be cattywampus, if, or trapezoidal I should say, not cattywampus, which is my favorite word of the day today. So. Now, 13 inches is our style. So this was a one by four material. We wanted to use this little, little bit wider. Now, if I was to use this, I don't think I'll have the room. Maybe I will. If I was to use that for my rail or my style, look at all of the, the, the space I would lose. There's no sense in doing that. And aesthetically, it doesn't make any sense to use a one by four. So what we're gonna do is use a one by three and try to gain a little bit more space. So we're gonna cut all those uh, on the table saw four at 13 inches and you're in my way because I got to cut right there <laughs> anytime you're you're uh, making a cut for a style see that edge cut it off don't trust it so drop your stop give yourself one clean edge to work off of and then trim off the other the precision miter gauge is awesome because I just put the stop in Again, this one's 13 inches, this one's 13 inches. I know it's exact. If I need to trim a little off, I lift this up. I can slide it past. I can run it through. Pull it back, drop it down, do the same thing, and cut it to length. It's that simple. Woodworking is all about repetition and making sure that each piece is exactly the same. That's where you get the success, especially with the, the face frame system that they have. All right, so it's time to drill some pocket holes. Just secure your wood in place by clamping it into the jig and then just pushing down on the drill bit. Really nice thing is that once you set the collar on the drill bit and you set the depth of the material on the gauge, it's no worries. It's smooth sailing from there. Just drill your pocket holes and rest assured they're gonna be perfect every time. All right, so normally I wouldn't recommend using your table saw as the bench, but at this point, we're, uh, we're using what's better for the audience to see it. So, you can lose this as well. So you got your top and your bottom, and what you're gonna do is lay out your left and your right. So you take your first one, bring it right over here. Now, if you have a clamp table, you can clamp it right down to the table, but because this is a little longer, it's a little tougher with just that, so we're gonna use this with a regular face frame clamp. With the Craig pocket hole screws, you don't necessarily need glue, but I use it as, 
a backup, if you will. And when you're applying glue, you need to know how to apply it. If you put too much on, like that, what happens is, is you're going to get too much squeeze out. It's going to get uh, to a point where the joint won't come together because there's so much glue there. So what you're, as you can see it dripping down, <laughs> it's raining glue in here. What you're going to want to do is clean that off a little bit. So you're going to disperse the glue. Use your finger. Come on, for crying out loud, you can get a little dirty. And then wipe it somewhere. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I would wipe it on my pants, but it has, these are my good jeans. So now you've dispersed the glue, you've got a good surface area, so when the screws go in, they tuck it in nice and tight and they give the bond of not only just the pressure points of where the screw are, but now that glue joint, you have glue throughout the entire joint, which is good. It, it is probably a little overkill, but I find it to be necessary when I'm doing stuff like this. It makes for a better build. Make sure you're completely flush on this side. Put them together. and clamp. Now I can take my screws and run it home. One pocket hole is the same as two pocket holes is the same as three pocket holes. There's no way to screw this up. Once you've got it clamped, you just run your screws in. Um, I will say this is that the material that I bought is from a home store. It can vary slightly as far as the thickness. So there's a good chance you're gonna have to sand, but there's very, very minimal sanding for something like this. And then boom, there's a pocket hole joint. Wipe the glue away, and you got a nice tight joint. Now we do this a bunch of different times. We got a face frame. Here's a very, very key point. Because I know the distance between here and here, because we use these pieces right here, I made a spacer right here. It's my 19 and 3 8 inch spacer. Space sir, sorry, it's late in the day. That is gonna drop right in, right there. When I come over to do my next style, I drop it right in place, I put a little glue on it, and I screw that in. The reason why I do that is because when I come down here, I do the same thing there. This opening not only stays square, but it's the same exact opening as all the way over there. So. When I build the drawers, is that's gonna help me out. If this is off a sixteenth of an inch, now the, that drawer over there has to be off a sixteenth of an inch because it won't fit. So using spacers and making yourself these, I mean, look, it's scrap wood. Saves you a ton of time and makes for a simpler install. So just slap it in, take my glue, open the glue, put it in and run that screw in and you should be good. The spacer really does save you a lot of time, not only when you're just installing the styles here, but also later on when you're building the drawers. It keeps your face frame square, and when you go to build your drawers, that way you can build a bunch of drawers the same exact size all at once. And don't forget to use the face frame clamps. They hold the joint flush while you're running in the pocket screws. All right, so there is the face frame. Voila. That is going to cover our unsightly plywood edges. That goes just on like that, flush over here. Now, because of the way we set it up, it's going to be flush to the bottom. And we just screw all our pocket holes that we pre-drilled already. So all it is simple is taking the drill and running some pocket holes. And doing that about 25 more times. Voila, there's your box. Check it from this side. Let me see if I can spin it. Now you're starting to see it come to life a little bit. Now this is the space that otherwise would have been unused space that you would have thrown the shoes underneath, the boxes and stuff like that. Now we'll build drawers that fit in here, here and here. Remember there's two of these, one on either side, footboard at one end, headboard at the other. You got yourself a built-in bench. Well, not a bench, actually. It's a bed, not a bench. Unless you're going to really put your... Sh anyway, 